And the topic of uh, this panel is ecologic transition and urban governance. So this to two topic, two complicated uh, topics. So I will add without any further ado, invite now, now in this panel, Mr. Adwa Gustav, the DG of Sustainable Development of Four Minutes here in Cote d'Ivoire. The Honorable uh, Mrs. Amakwa Kazi Esperance, who is now a member of civil society, but who used to be um, MP in uh, Southern Kivu in DRC. You're welcome. We have Paul uh, Testa, who is the general delegate of an NGO, me, moi je trouve, oui which is active in Cote d'Ivoire and Togo. Mr. Eric Piol that we have heard many times, the mayor of Cronome, president of, uh, of uh, IOPD. Welcome. And uh, also Maximum S. Calabri, who is the head of uh, the Cooperation of Delegation of uh, uh, European Union here in Cote d'Ivoire. So, welcome. So, I pro a round of applause for them. So, we have one hour. So, what is the idea? The idea is that I'm going to give four questions question to the panelists and you also. They will have five minutes to so, so uh, we will take your question, their questions, we we'll take advantage of their knowledge because we are lucky to have uh, NGOs representative, uh, MPs, mayor responsible for European Union. So we have a very interesting uh, space here. So just prepare your question, listen. Thank the thank you. Those four questions I'm just going to give. The first question is around how to build that governance. Yes, of course we we talk about ecology transition and urban governance. So how do we build it and what is the role for citizenship? We have some experiences. For example, the one of the uh, seven Kivilo which uh, favor some actions from participatory budgets, but we have other mechanisms which exist. We have a C, uh, Citizen Council for Climate and committees uh, all the time uh, that engage the citizens. So all the topics that are around this. So can you share your experiences on the form of governance which was established from your actions? What could you, what were you able to establish and what lesson can you learn from that? What's work, what didn't work and what are the recommendations you were making? And the third one is among the different measures to be taken on board for the cities to assure energy transition. Uh, I insist climate is today and energy transition and so what are the sectors of recycling waste collection what are the project program you find important and actions to be done which are uh, part of participative democracy and the fourth one which is a very important topic uh, for us uh, in uh, IOP because and an climate and just um, but the most uh, uh, not desirable objects affect uh, here in Africa the the who are not uh, disseminating green gas 
so we have uh, the car, the, the the cities who, who participated budgets have been half cut to reinforce other ones in uh, Africa, uh, Africa cities in other part to reinforce the to also adaptation to mitigate those effects so we call it solely uh, sub participative uh, budget so this is around those four topics that I'm inviting our panelists so we are lucky to have Mr. Peter the mayor of uh, Grenoble who uh, will not be available uh, after 12 so he will leave us after but uh, we are lucky to have uh, Diego Fernandez sorry Diego for mispronouncing your name but he will take he will replace him after to by taking by answering some of the questions so you have each of all you five minutes and after we go for questions take the floor first so if you are comfortable in uh, speaking first thank you good morning to all of you thank you for the invitation and i'm also greeting the panelists what to say uh we're gonna start maybe uh, i will start with the last question related to the stick of uh, in a territorial inequalities uh, word uh, at the word uh, worldwide so you also talk about the greenhouse gas but with the consequence of uh, uh, climate um, warming so since the industrial uh, uh, time up to now we can say the consequence Related to climate, uh, on a uh, scene uh, uh, around the oceans and the seas, and the consequence of climate effects, uh, they are having bad consequences on developing countries. So, for me, the awareness for us, uh, this uh, I shall read. The capacity to reduce greenhouse for or go through uh, the awareness of what we have uh, 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 going through. So I'm favorable of uh, taking uh, this model being percentage of our participatory budget to fund other participatory budget in other countries. So this uh, idea is welcome. Uh, and w what we can do as far as participative budget is concerned, but also with our um, ability to understand the scope. Uh, maybe because you are asking the question in which way, in which sector the citizen participation can help us reach the right speed for reduction of greenhouse gas and what I find important to note is that by leaning upon a participative democratic and uh, democracy and the input of uh, inhabitants we can uh, accelerate that transition meanwhile the system is longer and the elected people sometimes they take power as they are old and with uh, old Practices and the capacity to get the system improved. <laughs> so, for us, the citizen participation what is a way for us to be aware of uh, populations of problem, um, populations problem, and they are on the way to 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 use the common uh, heritage and question related to food health and it also transform 
the, re the, the relationship between the elected people uh, who um, are not uh, delivering service anymore towards its essence. So what we decide to do together is uh, to gather the financial uh, human um, resources uh, so that administration is no more playing the role of suppliers. And then they did not uh, uh, consider the inhabitants, those who are at the source of what we're doing together. So it's uh, so this is uh, to uh, this has to be seen. Uh, so then it's enable us to change the culture, to have uh, a change uh, coalition. So it is in the area of uh, public uh, uh, management space. So we have uh, Citizen Energy Cooperative and with uh, solar panels and in the circular economy where we have more active populations. And when we look at the participative budgets, we see the environment and solidarity. So for those who have been chosen, uh, it is about uh, painting in white uh, the roof to mitigate the heat that are so uh, through uh, the culture and then is also the all the question related to waters and is in urban urbanism projects and then to use the common space for the space to be used to fight against uh, the sun so when uh, we have uh, a good uh, level to produce concrete project we can see it and then for, for Grenoble, which was the first ecology city in 2014, which has been chosen by European Commission to be the capital of Europe in 2022, the investment over climate is for us a uh, uh, mean to change to be in uh, all the sectors. Thank you to Mr. Mayor, because what we notice is we have very good laboratories which are constructive, constructing our buildings. Is to, to say that it's possible participative democracy is a great lesson learned, and we are lucky that the next uh, IOPD will. So it's a great opportunity, that will be a great opportunity to see what he is doing in the field. So thank you for the first testimony. I will now give the floor maybe to Mrs. Uh, to Madam. Mrs. Esperance. You are the floor and you have five minutes to tell us the about uh, the advancements. So you have five minutes experience. So good day, everybody, and thank you for this opportunity. I am going to share with you the experience of the participative measure in the environment in our countries. So we uh, we uh, did many actions in the case of participative budget we built uh, schools and um, public buildings uh, and since we did not uh, plan the question related to environment or the environmental aspect we had uh, many uh, rains we had rains which created uh, many um, you know um, problems. Uh, it, it was not planned in our project. So we sensitize the the youth. 
and then we sensitized them and they took ownership of this problem. So in uh, each school where we did our, where we presented our projects, they uh, sh show us, they show positive actions, they even planted many trees in the environment, in their schools where we conducted the project. So, so, uh, so the the places uh, when uh, there were many landslides, it's uh, mitigated the problem. We didn't have the budget for that because our uh, authorities did not do anything for that. But uh, at least after we got some means to do that. But so regarding the places where the bridge were were broken, we found uh, some partners who accepted to support us. But with this, we also had the community there. And the community brought some materials for the buildings of the bridge, and the partners gave us the means of founding and then to just contain the waters uh, that uh, we could see in that environment. So this uh, help us find solutions uh, in this uh, uh, problem uh, because it was not uh, uh, planned in the project. So we say we prom with a uh, perspective uh, budget we can uh, solve uh, problem related to uh, we can solve uh, those potential problems and as action what we can say regarding our experience actions that we undertook as positively with the perspective budgets the community took ownership of the approach with all the problems that we may have locally without enough uh, means, without expecting the, our authorities' means or our partners' means, we end up uh, solving the local problem, the problem at the local level. So when we have the problem, we sensitize at the basis level and each forum go to population and explain to the population because they know what they have as problem and what we have as means because with uh, the uh, parents, the population is supposed to know the solution to those problems. Because when we don't have accountability, the population thinks to have solution to the problems, but with our participative budget uh, approach, we don't solve the great problem because we don't have great means. We just solve the small problem, um, and this we uh, this reinforces this. But for the great problem, we take it to the techno technical partners. Uh, because this uh, is, uh, we don't have meaning for that. But at the local, pro uh, at the local uh, level, we solve the the small problems, and uh, it favor good collaboration with the local community. Thank you so much for this testimony. So maybe what is important is how did you succeed in engaging the population through a process, through getting the volunteers, uh, even if you have, uh, if the real resources are not adequate, when uh, you ha there were that great problem, one day you said uh, instead of this making a decision alone, you highlighted the resources to uh, prioritize it. And you think you put until 60% of investment capacity. Not uh, facing, not before the danger, 
but as a debate, and I think that thanks to the acceleration of change, that political courage that you had is remarkable regarding what you have achieved. Uh, thank you for this testimony. Let us continue. Um, invite now Paul Testa, the delegate, the general delegate. Five minutes you have. Thank you so much. Uh, good day to all of you. I am a representative of the, the, the uh, NGO, Moi Je Tri. We are represented in three countries, Côte d'Ivoire to go France. We have a simple uh, ambition. We want to participate to, uh, to create the citizen of uh, tomorrow. So we know that the children will be uh, the one taking over. So today we will succeed in a committed more than uh, many children and uh, uh, we are in two uh, municipalities, two in Côte d'Ivoire and uh, three in, in Togo. So if you want to have an impact on one million of children by 2025. This is the guidelines. So I will just come back to the last question on the right transition, so equal, equal transition, and what we do in West Africa. Today, we know the sub-Saharan in Africa is 4% of greenhouse gas on this continent. And then the stake here for maybe the European country is just maybe to decrease the greenhouse uh, gas. So 80 of uh, uh, um, countries who have the high rate of urbanized urbanizations in Africa. When we talk about uh, urban urban aspect is, is important. So how can we support this action? So this is a very significant thing. So to today between uh, 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 this billions invest those billion invested by up here. So we have a, we're gonna have that uh, uh, question to deal with. So today the question, the very important one, is the question of means. Uh, to the only three percent are allocated to to cities, and it is only three percent week that budget is weak so the transition is going to be done uh, at the territory level so there is a big stake of funding uh, and to be close to the territory so this problem is essential for us this is the first point now the second point i wanted to highlight is what are the lessons we learn from this ngo uh, I will talk about four specific uh, lessons. The first one is that we demonstrate with uh, that that the children, with their commitment, can participate to that ecology transition simply. So today, in the school where we are working with, uh, we have 50 tons of uh, of, uh, of trash collected by the ch the, 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 the the children. So they convince their parents to bring their waste to the school, and we're going to work on that waste. And then mm, we know that if we commit the children inside, they can do many things. And the second thing that is very important is so that we, we work a lot on waste, but because most of the time waste is seen as something negative, as um, Mm. So, so well, what we can do is that we can turn it to social innovation and it can create value in territories or we create value by uh, valuing the wastes. So via those ways we can create value and give it back to school so that uh, uh, those it can have a good impact in the schools of those children, so it's very important. Another program that we have is even the waste can contribute to the energy access to energy. So in Togo, we have a, where each child has his individual lamp, and uh, via the money that we 
collect uh, this is helpful for them this is the uh, the second one so the third topic is the governance we are convinced that the the, the municipalities offices they cannot do things by themselves the children cannot do things by themselves the schools and all those stakeholders uh, of uh, territorial parties cannot do anything. But what we want to do is to create that territorial system and have a dedicated governance. So for us, it's, it's, it's going to be good to have a long-term working program. So in terms of governance, I think children can be committed. We create a small, small club in those schools, and then t those children are stakeholders in decision making as far as with the concern. So maybe tomorrow we're gonna have a children council that will be here. We come here to warn the elected people on those problems. The fourth point is the right transition. If you want the transition to be done in territory, we have to to show it can I prove that the transition will favor job, uh, the, the creation of job, then we cannot make it. Thank you so much for this, uh, for this, uh, for these details. Now, for governance measures, also even at the small level and. Build the center. One of the idea was to involve schools for them to see that climate injustice, and for them to be, to have discussion between children, for them to um, see what kind of future they want to have. The, um, to help them at the young they are with solidarity with the centralized uh, cooperation also at uh, in school so it's important to talk about uh, what you working upon uh, we are a good news that the mayor of agronom can s stay with us so thank you for having changed your schedule this is very kind of you so i will now give the floor to abwa Mr. was the first on the list, but since we change things, so Mr. Uh, you have the floor. I am a Democrat, and I would like to thank the mayor of the of Kokodi, who is the main uh, actor of sustainable development. Let me recall that Mr. Mayor was uh, manager of NGO promoting renewable energy. He has a he used to have a, a structure promoting solar energy. So thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I am also uh, I also have Mrs. Dow Kabala, who is a an actor of democracy and uh, the environmental management and also the authorities who are actors uh, deeply in, engaged in promoting the environment. What I would like to say is that this idea was seen since the first president of Cote d'Ivoire, Félix Oufoboying, who sent to so-called a first tip to the first team to try and see the the mix uh, kind of collaboration and we sent to that meeting when we had uh, Andira Gambi, all the high ranking people at that time and the voice of God was heard but unfortunately the mixture was difficult so then we wait until uh, uh, 87 to create the momentum of environmental pro protection and also the promotion of the social aspect and the econo economic one. Can we have another mic, please?
Can you help us with bike? We have had many achievements in, uh, in Côte d'Ivoire. In uh, 1907, we had the environment code. We needed, we required uh, many uh, inputs when an industrial want to invest in the environment or in the economy. We conduct studies first. And after we have public hearing, which uh, involve all the stakeholders of beneficiary to find the way, the good way to protect the environment. So it's an old practice in the Cote d'Ivoire, but it's still ongoing. It has been reinforced with the code on environment and with the support of uh, World Bank. For sure, um, I know we have uh, some difficulties, but uh, I think uh, the, it's, uh, the, the, the idea is there already, and for the sustainable development, let us uh, say that since the first meeting of Rio 92, with the capital action, so capital um, element of sustainable capital structure of sustainable development since uh, the night the 80s when the president uh, uh, took a law for decentralization we had the first municipalities the first uh, city so decentralization is an old process mm. we did not go to the end and today we have thousand uh, of uh, uh, commune. Uh, we have uh, 14 districts and 31 uh, regions. So it's true we have financial uh, financial challenges, uh, but uh, I think things are improving. As an uh, example, I will take an uh, example on on uh, waste. Also, waste today. Uh, all those who are paying electricity bills contribute to. Uh, the funding of uh, household uh, waste and, and, and after contributing to the tax of uh, waste collection, I think each household uh, um, pay, it depends, and according to Kokodi, you may pay 5000 per month uh, for the waste collectors. You provide a bubble, it's very between 1,000 and 2,000. So it's a yes. collective contribution for the management yes. of waste. And also, uh, for the forest aspect, we have the new forest code, which invite, we invite people uh, to plant trees. And since this is not uh, in our, it's not seen in our culture, there is a support of the government uh, uh, that, uh, and then for those uh, who want to create, to build private forests, uh, we allow them to do that. They can do it and even exploit it, no problem. So just to say that for sure, you talk about climate change, but there is a, a judicial, the law, another law aspect. We say that there are common responsibilities, and um, Cote d'Ivoire will we go to Aslago next week. Increase is national contribution of 20 from 28 percent. We're now going to read. 30.5 percent. It is a large step forward with innovative projects. I think this report will be presented there, and then Cote d'Ivoire want to be ahead in, of uh, developed country who succeeded their 
won't succeed. So we are in the right way. So sustainable development is ongoing is uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, and the participative democracy is ongoing. And I think we only have uh, one planet. So let us work and protect that planet. Even those who make the experience, they go to Mars. Uh, you, you, they see the difference. Even those who are paying millions to go to other planets, that you just still come back, just to say that we have to protect the 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 Earth, the only one planet that we have for us and for our population. Thank you for the contribution. We are honored to have Mr. Mayor uh, with us, and knowing that your way match with our expectations. So for you to be here, it is not by chance. So thanks to be here with us. So the last intervention now, I think we're going to have 30 minutes to discuss, five minutes uh, for the head of cooperation of uh, European Union. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning to all of you. It's not that obvious uh, uh, to talk about all that has been said by my predecessors. They have already talked about very important things that all I also noted. So I try to concentrate on two or three things uh, which uh, I think were not uh, tackled and I want to underline them. I would like to move from the topic of this panel, the ecology, the, this the question of the topic of the panel with now process and the question of uh, city and uh, energy energy transition is it was part of the question I think is one of the important aspects because sometimes we think that uh, we have to to tackle the things with uh, s a conviction. I am new here in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, I have arrived here one month and a half ago. But I don't know, now, but I know the European Union work a lot in the energy sector for long. And what draw my attention to is that what attracted me is that I discovered that 50% of electricity consumption is uh, is manufactured is done by a small group of big and companies. So if you wonder this. Is, uh, this solution is also for the uh, city is the is to think of the energy efficiency it's a sector where European Union would like to work upon in the US to come with Cote d'Ivoire because it is a uh, it is not uh, only the citizen party uh, but it is uh, also a very uh, important point uh, because on the other side, if we consume less, then we can access uh, energy for um, the great part of uh, the great um, part of the population can have access to the energy. So we have to work together on that uh, problem of microphone. This microphone is not working anymore. Another aspect which I've been tackled is question related to resources. Once more, I know you are aware of what happened in Europe with uh, mobilizing uh, resources is very important for green deal. The European Union engaged in neutrality of carbon by 2050, by reducing 50 percent, the reduction by, by reducing of 50 percent. So to face it, we we made available important, significant resources because it costly. So the question, which was already asked, is how to found the ecology transition. So the distance on lies, cooperation ideas, is not something new. It's a concept which has been here for more than 
50 years. So we have to target well that cooperation and solidarity of um, north and south and solidarity between uh, the uh, southern c countries. I think there is a question of decentralization. The last speaker said it. We are in a country where decentralization start the process started but is not complete. Sometimes we have the responsibility but we don't have resources. So how can the the mayor office or the municipality do the investment? Uh, the appropriate one. And the other point also is a question of inclusion. Because you talk about citizen participation. Because the but the participation comes with inclusion. So be careful of including the group who are not supposed to participate for different reasons. It can we can have social uh, reason, uh, economic uh, reasons. So, for example, the participation of the youth, participation of uh, women, and participation, participation of women, uh, of, uh, and sometimes those poor, those who are too poor. Uh, don't have the means to participate, so uh, it is important uh, the fact that uh, in participation, whether be uh, whether be the the participative uh, budget, we have to be careful for the inclusion. Finally, in three in three words, what does European Union think of doing? Talking about the ecology. Trans ecological transition. So the European Union, with the members, put themselves together and created an, a, uh, an initiative calling uh, transition by carbon. The idea is to so, to help um, um, to the reduction of uh, greenhouse gas of 30 percent. 30 percent. And the European Union is engaging in supporting Cote d'Ivoire in that line. I'm talking about mobility, energy, and also everything around the city, or the countryside, the forest. But we should not forget that the effect of the city also has an impact on the surrounding environment. So we cannot talk about ecological transition and urban governing without taking into account uh, the surrounding of the city. The surrounding of the city. So thank you so much uh, for this last intervention because it gives us a large scope of uh, building international governance. And thank you for having completing some of the point which was not uh, raised. Thank you. And then so we are now at the time to listen to your comments and your questions. So you have the floor. Who wants to react? Who wants to bring his testimony? Who wants to share his testimony with us? I can see one person, two persons, three. So let us start here. There's, uh, can somebody help me to just uh, help me with the mic? Maybe can you introduce you in uh, two words? Know you more and know what you've been doing. I'm Mariam Dawo Gabala, senator uh, from from the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, and I would like to salute all the panelists. And uh, I would like to share with you a personal uh, conviction, uh, a conviction of somebody who engaged in uh, sustainable uh, development uh, for ten dec for two decades. We talk about sustainable city, we talk about sustainable development, we talk about sustainable uh, 
uh, budget but we have to know that all uh, sustainability is in uh, is found in the invest in the human investment it is very important that in each development the human human uh, should be the center we are talking about ecological transition we are talking about numbers of things but my experience just May tells me that all the things is impossible if the citizen or the inhabitant of uh, a city take ownership the concept of s the sustainability ecology uh, and so on and so forth let me give you an example the first example is that we found a market because here we have um, we have uh, the sun uh, we said propose them to enlighten the market with uh, solar energy it will cost them a lot but at least the bills would have decreased they said ah it's good but we even didn't know that that they will build the market now that to build the market you don't want us to use the modern energy so you see change of paradigms so sustainable development is not in the consumption it's either in the sustainability aspect. The second uh, element goes in line with one of the testimonies. In the case of primary school building, we put in place a team called Environment, Environment. There were young children from six to 12 years old. And we painted some tires in yellow, red, and green for children to be able to choose their, um, to take their, their wastes out. Do you know where the resistance came from? The, the parents, the children, the children's parents, they say we did not uh, uh, send our children to school to do such things. It means the parents did not understand the put it in place that ecological transition I just want to draw your attention we are talkative but there is a change uh, in our with our population they should know that all we are building that should be sustainable uh, should be considered and seen differently those what I wanted to bring as contribution the human the man should be the center people should be the center of all the things uh, thank you so we cannot do investment without investing in, into human thank you we do agree with what uh, madam has just said just to come back to the to NGO, I think the NGO call is called Le Chetri. So that's uh, NGO which is based in France, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, and they want to put in synergy children from different space. So in line with what uh, the senator had just said and the reaction of parents, do we just take time to ask? The question to the children what do you want what have you understood and what you you want to do instead of saying you go out you collect the trash and you put it in a rubbish can uh, if it's this way it's mechanism so the child which is uh, under the authority of the master is obliged to do it but if it's the child himself who is aware of that that would be easier so it's a question of generation. We should not uh, think solving the problem today. We should not be hurry. The other aspect is the child in Europe who has solved some of the problem questions and and um, education. If you have to compare it with another child from Senegal, and uh, I want uh, about Gamakuma, and I want the NGO to intervene Gamakuma. So where? The child has uh, scholar fees problems and food problems. Can we, which response can we give in terms of sustainability of our cities? Because today, some attitude asks us to work 
for the future. We have to solve the present situation, but unfortunately, we haven't solved yet those kind of problems, sending them to school, make sure they have the birth certificates, all those small things which are not safe. Yes, we are not solved yet. And the issue on which I want to draw your attention, you know, a, a, an issue on which we need to be patient because this is a construction process. And uh, allow me, please. Allow. I think we have ten participants who are still pending to ask questions. So thank you very much for recalling the importance of this. What I want to tell you is that in 1997. Uh, the first participative budget were being carried out. I participated, and we were very clear. We had what was a participative budget for children and participative budget through children. And it was quite obvious. And it's on that second uh, step that we saw the best examples, the process were allowing them to express themselves. Thank you, your for your contribution, we'll give chance to those who are behind you. Yes, lady, yeah. The microphone is coming to you. No, ladies first. Yes, after you ask your question. Hello, thank you. I'll simply like to share my experience. I'd like to talk about the NGO as we did. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire, it's an international NGO, but we are operating in Cote d'Ivoire, and our speciality is to uh, manage waste. How can we uh, put this message across for children? We decided that during Christmas, we are organizing some event for the children, and our gift we are giving to uh, those children are uh, uh, re uh, disposable bags and uh, this type of uh, promotion is good because our colleague was saying that we should teach the children to insert in his memory this sorting of waste so that the parents do not complain when we ask the children to do this. So when we decided to have this green Christmas event, we were only talking about sorting the waste instead of giving them uh, pamphlets and those children gifts. I grabbed this opportunity to thank the mayor because uh, we have been provided with the disposable bags by the mayor you know, we're using hooks and many other things to do our activities just to teach the children to, you know, have that in mind. You know, the children should know how to sort the waste. And you know children are better teacher to the parents because when a children, a child uh, tells the parent that you need to sort the waste before disposing of your waste, the parents will take it easy, you know, because the parents are not ready to do it on the spot. Thank you very much. Thank you for your intervention. I can see the gentleman. Uh, do we have any other participants willing to take the floor? One or two more, and then we close uh, the session to give the chance to the panelists to send to say something. Good morning. I am Dezeki. I am a business uh, uh, a person working at the fruit dock of Abidjan, and uh, we are also using waste to produce power. I would like to thank the representative of EU to say that we have two ways of course, when you try to reflect on the issue, we have a first problem. It is the uh, duty fees that you pay on these type of products. So they are very high. Uh, Honorable mayor, mayor knows it. The custom duties are very, very high. And of course, it has an impact on the cost of our uh, installation. So we have to reflect on it so that we have some 
conditions uh, for importation, acceptable, affordable conditions with custom fees which are reduced. That is my first intervention. Uh, can, you, can you be concise because many people have to take the floor. The second issue is the uh, fishery renovation in uh, waters. We have uh, artificial uh, innovations to establish uh, perimeters to breed fish and we are failing to put this mas message across. Maybe we have to reflect on that too. You are raising an item which is in the energy transition, very important, and this has to do with protein from fishery, and uh, this is part of maybe one of the topics we need to discuss. I had three hands raised. Yes, we had the gentleman over there and the lady. W let me finish with the uh, gentleman and the lady so that we give time to the panelists to react on these issues. Uh, maybe to talk about the last observations, uh, you should talk about uh, ecological transition and uh, urban governance. I know there are some issues regarding uh, youth. Yes, gentlemen. I am Paul Henri Amari. I am project manager. I would like to ask a question, a general question to uh, the director of the environment and also the general delegate for uh, ONG J3. We know the value of uh, a process, pre-collection, sorting, and recycling. But do we have at all any market regarding recycling? Do you have any uh, company or do you have many companies operating in the value addition of waste because more and more we mm, see people sorting waste but these uh, bags of waste by the roadsides many of them so what is the status of the companies uh, recycling these waste or adding some more values to the waste thank you uh, we will close the Q&A series with the lady, the one with the hand raised. Thank you. Good morning. Marie Jose Kwaku. I'm habitant, inhabitant of Kokodi. I would like to commend all the panelists. And I must say that this is going uh, deep straight to my heart because we have our mayor which is, who is fighting for this commune. We see uh, trashes everywhere and we also see that the collection of waste is uh, uh, recurrent and the pavements which are free of waste and is fighting to make the city clean. But the the um, issue is the fact that the citizens are repeating bad habits. Through your explanation, you gave us some um, schemes today with the mayor of Grenoble. We hear concepts like uh, green city. We saw with I do my waste sorting with children involved, and the senator draws drew our attention on the awareness reason instead of uh, forcing people to sort waste. But the mayor of Grenoble, I would like to call on you and uh, ask that you explain how you ended up being a green city, just in a summary. Thank you. I think we have come to the end of our uh, journey. Uh, you take two minutes to make your final statements, the core message, trying uh, to address uh, these questions. So the, qu the floor is now open. I start with you. Do we have any microphone for the panelist? And then you hand over the microphone when you are done. Thank you. I'd like to thank the uh, senator and all the people ask questions. These are questions and contributions. But what I can 
put across is that we are trying uh, to disseminate you know the sustainable uh, development concept we even translated in local languages and i mean I, I said local languages because we wanted to make it a national issue so we have around 20 languages into which we translated the uh, uh, agenda 2021 especially SDG 17 and today uh, you have the 17 SDGs explained in Senufo, Baule, in Anyi, our local languages just to encourage um, the personalization of this agenda 2030 by our population. We also uh, promoted the insertion of uh, waste sorting in our uh, curriculum because uh, on the long term it will bear fruit and what we notice is that on the short term children started you know uh, absorbing because the president was saying we should start with the children so that we uh, shift to a new paradigm to come up with the new Ivorian, you know, an Ivorian who is very sensitive to uh, environment. We are still facing difficulties, it is true, but this is not going to stop us or prevent us from continuing. If women have refused the solar energy, it's because they don't know what it is. And we have uh, this example in all the villages with the uh, program of uh, electrification. We got to know that our parents prefer the grid, the normal national grid that we have, the hydro. You know, we need to see the, the pools, electric pools. When you talk about solar energy, they will tell you that it's not, it's not good. At first, in the beginning, we were facing, you know, technologies which is, were not very reliable. But today, let me close with this, with the new code of investment, somebody was asking what was done and I can tell you that the, the new investment code is providing uh, a, a fiscal subsidy, subsidy to mitigate climate change. Anybody at all, any entity willing to invest in, um, in, in, in environment safeguard is uh, benefiting from that new investment code. He was asking if that we have some companies adding values to waste. Uh, we have cities, you know, uh, especially oils, uh, engine oils are recycled. Even the uh, tires are even used uh, for manufacturing new ones. So the circular economy, it's ongoing. We are calling on all the citizens to uh, truly dispose of their waste for people to come and collect them. Thank you very much. And thank you very much. I just wanted to say, uh, especially in connection with children and the appropriation of uh, environmental policies, we started, you know, uh, acting, actions like uh, parents and children activities when they saw that we did something with them and without them they saw the difference we did this awareness raising because uh, they were having other issues for example a school which is built wrongly if the parents uh, have seen this school they were obliged to help us uh, improve that school or keep the school in good condition so easily they accepted to do the planting but the other schools also planting trees around the school and rearrange the, the, the school just like they were they're ready you know and telling us that we started please come and join us so they were taking the lead in doing some actions, some projects, just to say that they are ready to assist us. This is a give-give situation. So if you give, they will also give you. 
their patronization. Thank you very much for your testimony. Two quick answers. The first one is the prioritization of uh, issues which could not be worse than environment, nutrition, and health. These are issues uh, which are connected with very, very sound solutions. We want to create citizens of today and tomorrow. But you talked about uh, ghost children uh, who do not have uh, identity. You know, you cannot tell them to create these young people without uh, documents, legal documents. So we should think about issuing them with national documents. The second thing is to supplement the comments on uh, recycling. We have uh, many sectors. If we take, for example, plastic, a lot of resin are recycled. I will take this plastic bottle. Uh, most of the PET are used for plastic surgery in Europe. You know, it is uh, used and disposed of, and we don't know if we have to recycle. Of course, we need to have some industrial, logical uh, a factory for this type of plastic is at least 15 million euros. It's not easy, but what we do, we send it to Africa, and then it is risen to the sea uh, at best, or to Europe to make t-shirts in polyester. So it is just uh, something uh, wrong. Uh, we need to recycle uh, these things locally. Two major remarks. I think the ecological transition as against development is a real opportunity to review the international cooperation. You followed the uh, discussions uh, between Africa and uh, France with the image of the dirty port. I think for ecological transition, we are working on common asset, be it in Kokodi or Grenoble. We are working uh, for the fitness of a global, global uh, condition. The second is that we are very happy to talk to all the mayors and engage with them, those willing to uh, carry out projects regarding recycling and uh, value addition to waste. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a specific question which was coming to me. Uh, what is the start of, I think? We have many ways of uh, discussing things, but we started, uh, first of all, by with changing the imaginary, uh, breaking the wall between uh, the inhabitant, the population, and the elected persons. In doing so, we decided uh, to uh, drop down our a position of mayor to behave like a mere citizen. It may appear wrong, but we had the choice to dress up like anybody, you know, I mean, without neckties, because that's what I do when I'm in Grenoble, because I want people to see me like themselves. We stopped using vehicles with drivers. We just move around just like anybody using common a public transport or a bicycle. And, and the purpose of all this was to say to the people that we are working for the public uh, good. And we need that coalition between the elected persons and the population. So these has changed the way people were seeing us and created a new dynamism and uh, gave us to be very sincere in our citizen approach. And behind that, we tried to assess topics which were of interest to anybody, regardless of your cultural or economic situation. We reflected on the mobility issue, how we move around, which is uh, guiding our practices, how we use public spaces, because this is our common space, our common asset. What do we do in that space? This is how we decided in 2014 to uh, forbid publicity. You know, that uh, 
public uh, space should not be a way to stimulate, uh, let's say, uh, uh, commercial. So we have to break that, and the public space should be a space for project, uh, a meeting place. So we worked out things. We are going to reduce the parking space, giving priority to um, uh, pedestrians and to build more pavement to allow any bicycle in the city to uh, ride freely, to give more advantage to those moving uh, with public transport and their own bicycles or motorbikes. So after that public space, we selected uh, the nutrition and the feeding because these are public issues, even health, regardless to the discrimination. Anybody at all is uh, concerned with health, air pollution, waste, access to prevention and health. So this is how we started with a big based on citizen participation. Things sometimes worked and some did not work, so we had to change. And as time went on, we adapted our citizen participation approach, uh, making one of our victory. I think we started uh, small wins, but it helped us, uh, building us building up our win. So we are bringing small new changes to have a big change. So this is the general mindset that we had when we were carrying out our uh, policy project. Thank you. I have less to say. I think all has been said. I'll bounce forth and back concerning something. I think it is the senator who said it. It is the youth education to invest in a change of habit, and I think maybe the smallest uh, people, children, maybe will bring about uh, the, 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 the change because the grown people, the adult, has already acquired bad habits, so it is difficult with them. Very big thank to you. It is quite clear with regard to participative democracy when we listen to the panelists and you, the audience, we get to know that governance should be multi actor and this is at the core of participative democracy because each of you will bring about his stone, his block uh, to build that uh, participation. But with a new dynamic, it's not a part, but uh, the synergy and we had a chance to have these echoes and that will be uh, what I can add to this concept of participative democracy, local forums uh, at school places for various actors to bring their solutions. The second observation, sorry, is very <laughs> unfortunate to have this kind of resource person with so many ideas, you know, to stop them. I had to do that for time constraint. That is the rule of the game. We are all compelled to comply. So, sorry, announcement. The forthcoming, I mean, the next panel which is already delayed, which is uh, cities and women leadership will now be held here in Saldefet, no longer in Bassam. So those who are interested in that topic, uh, women leadership should remain in this room or continue here. So it's no longer in Sal Bassam. Uh, can we give a round of applause to our panelists? Uh, a big thank to uh, the International Observatory, Observatory for Participative Democracy for giving us a chance to reflect on these issues. We'll end here, and I declare this session closed. Thank you very much.